Hello everyone, uh, welcome back to the channel. Uh, in response to uh, a lot of questions on, on how to set up this Terminator X uh, idle, uh, how to improve drivability, uh, I'm, I'm going to reference a couple of of your really high horsepower, your radical uh, vehicles, but mainly this is about the uh, more streetable, your modified uh stockish type, uh, mainly Mustangs. Uh, I'll talk, talk mostly about the 5.0s, uh, whether they're strokers or not, doesn't matter. And this would also apply to the uh, 351 based uh, equipment. Uh, like I say, I will reference some of the higher horsepower stuff, but it's mainly about how to get this stuff like your trick flow stage one, your Comp stage ones and your stage twos, your E cams, your V cams, all of these real mild cams that don't really require much to make make streetable. Uh, the first step I see I see a problem with is is people don't really know what to choose for idle speed, and that's that's really critical. Uh, if this were to be a a radical type. Uh, cam something with 240 degrees uh, duration at 50. You know, it may need a thousand RPMs to idle, may need 950, uh, whatever. Uh, people put in the wrong numbers. They don't take time to find out, uh, to play around with it and see what their what their cam, uh, you know, to actually find the sweet spot. So uh, this is just a base. Uh, base uh, calibration that that's in the software. It, it may have uh, imported a few settings from some previous cal calibrations, but it's, it's basically just uh, uh, pretty much the same as a wizard. Uh, you, you need to find a, a number that works. Uh, uh, I, I don't know. I, I can't tell you that number. You'll, you'll have to You'll have to play around and find it, but, but find that and put it in, and it's, it's not important at this time. Uh, what's, what's important and most important about making the car idle, idle proper, properly and actually drive, you know, throughout the RPM range is, is the fuel. Until you have the fuel right, nothing's going to be right. I, I mean, you're wasting your time to play around with this idle any more than just enough to try to get it to halfway level out to where you can actually dial in the fuel. So just pick a high number. Maybe, maybe set this. Uh, maybe the car will will idle at 650. Maybe it'll idle at 700. You know, for example, set this to. Uh, I don't know. We'll say 900. Doesn't matter. Uh, set it in in the temperature range because you want to work with it when it's. When it's up to full operating temp. Like I say, it makes no difference what you put in here as long as it's enough to keep the car running and running, running in uh, fairly steady. But, but that, that's when you, that's, you know, uh, that's critical. You, you need a good number there. You, you're going to be going around in circles if, if you set it too low. You, you, you're not going anywhere. Then I'll go here. Not, nothing on this on this page means anything as to how the car idles when it's sitting still, not touching the accelerator pedal, just sitting there idling up the temp. Not, nothing here means anything other than idle spark. And if you if the car is in really good shape when you first started, you, you're not gonna, really going to need to move this much with your milder cams and like I said that's what I'm basically focusing on. Uh, you don't you don't set any of this. If you do you set these numbers uh, to whatever, just play around with them a little bit. Try to get it to where it it, uh, it drives enough to where you can tune it. But other than that, don't, don't worry about what you put in here. Uh, put in put in large numbers everywhere actually That'll help eliminate some of the stalling while you're in the tuning process. I mean, it may take you a couple hours. It may take a day or two to get one tune. 
and it's not going to matter which IAC you're using. It's not going to matter at all because we're going to take a measurement to get to get this number. We're going to we're going to take a measurement to get this number and this number. Your IAC part, I uh, would keep that high too, because you can bring all that down later. Once the fuel's perfect, go back and bring all this stuff down. You you don't need it to flare that high on startup. The same as you won't need as uh, much uh, as long a decay time when you start the cold engine once it's fully tuned. You can back these down to, you'll have to play around with that. You'll have to uh, go out uh, a few different days and and see what you can get away with, how, how short you can make that time. And if you tune it in the summertime, it comes wintertime. It may all be wrong anyway. It'd actually be better to tune it during cold weather because it's going to require more in, in, during the cold weather. So not, none of this, like I say, it, it means absolutely nothing other than idle speed when you're at idle. To get this number here, that'll be our starting point where uh, when you hit 3%, roughly 3% uh, on your TPS, your throttle angle, then it's going to kick into these tables. Before that, that they're just ignored. You can put anything you want. Uh, to get this number and this number, what we're going to do is say, like my own personal car, it's about 2,000 RPMs is a good is a good uh, sweet spot where I find myself driving a lot. Uh, the cam smooths out by that time. I've got a fairly rowdy cam. It smooths out pretty good around 2000. The exhaust noise is not so loud. So I have a 410 gear, so when I'm on the interstate, I don't want it. I don't, I don't want to have to wear earplugs, so I keep it around 2000. So that's the number I'm going to use here as an example. So what I would do is go here to the uh, uh, idle speed, and I choose the area I'm tuning the car in, which is going to be somewhere around. Uh, it's going to be above 160 always. But we'll, we'll go across here. We'll set this on, on that number I just picked, 2000. And with the engine running, it's going to crank it up to 2000. And however you prefer to look at it, this is an easy way. Just look right here, see what the IAC duty cycle is. Say it's 50%. That's also a good way to test an IAC. You can see how fast it goes up. Uh, you can see how high it'll go. It won't let you go any higher than 2,000. But you could, you can be sure that it'll go at least to that. Doesn't matter which one of these IACs you're using, because uh, that IAC duty cycle. Th these different IACs are going to—they're going to flow a little bit different. Each one's going to flow slightly different, so it, it's going to have a different duty cycle that's calibrated to the one you're testing. So that's all been compensated for. Uh, I mean, we don't have to—we don't have to uh, guess at what we're doing there. But say when I put this up to 2,000 now, I, I'm seeing. 50% duty cycle to hold it there. I would set this at 50% and I, actually I would back that down by about two points. I would put it at about 48. And then say I want the car to idle it uh, just for a round number, we'll say 1,000. Okay. Uh, I would subtract the 1,000 from the 2,000 that I used over here, and that equals 1,000, so I would put that number here. And this number I can't tell you either because it varies from one car to the next, one cam to the next, as all of these numbers do. So you're going to have to tweak them all, but that's a, that's a good place to start. And what's going to happen is when you when you're cruising, you hit three percent or better throttle angle. It's going to jump up to forty-eight, and 
a moderate cam is going to need 48% hold. Uh, with some of your, you know, your stage one cams and all, you might get by with 20, 25, 30%. Uh, larger cams, you may you may have to go a lot higher than 50 because they're going to need some air when they're moving. So that's something you'll have to play with also. But uh, for um, my, my personal car works right there about 40, I forgot, it's like 45. Uh, that helps eliminate a lot of the bucking. But, but before I do any of this, I, I, I do the number one step. Actually, I, I skipped it. I should have said it first. I get the fuel right. The fuel absolutely has to be right, or none of this will be will, will ever work out. You have to have the fuel finished. Do the, do all of these steps I'm going over right now last. Have the fuel uh, correction down to basically down to nothing, or all these will you know you'll have to go back and do them again. So the, but anyway, but, and also have your timing pretty close to uh, your idle time and have it pretty close to where you want it or where it seems to be happy. But get those two things out of the way because the fuel is, is the most important thing. The fuel can be off and it, it won't idle right in this. But this is your, maybe this is your block where you're idling. If the fuel's not right, it's going to swing out and around and, and it's going to go all over the place. And people tend to think that the problem is here, but it's not. It's in the fuel. You get the fuel right, all this stuff will calm down. The, the only thing that's working here when you're sitting still is the idle spark, which is trying to control time. And if it gets too out of hand, just shut it off for a while. Uh, you want things to work slowly. That's why I like a slower operating IEC because th there's really no point in it. The, the speed works against you in a lot of cases, not in every case. Nothing about tuning is 100%. But with, with a lot of cams, the, the speed of the IEC is going to work against you and also the speed here is going to work against you. So uh, keep that in mind when you're working on those. When you're dealing with your fuel, you don't want big corrections here. And you don't want to only have the idle block tuned or in, the whole map needs to be tuned. Because as soon as you start to let the clutch out and that load changes, it may be idling just perfect while it's bouncing around inside this block. But as soon as you put a little load on it with the clutch, or you know what something else puts load on it. If you run AC, the AC puts on it. It may swing down here, and this part of the table may not have been tuned, so it starts going crazy again. And I can't draw anything here but straight lines. But let's say you take it out and drive it, and you use the learn uh, transfer to learn, which I don't recommend. I recommend tuning the whole table, fixing it right. And you mash the button, and it halfway tunes this for you. That's okay. You know, you got your idle good. Now you got this little pathway. But what happens when the load changes and you come off of that pathway? It's like running off the road into the trees. Now you're up into an area that's not been tuned. Whether it's up here, it's down here, it's back here, wherever the areas you don't tend to go into as often, and it goes crazy again. So this whole map. This whole map needs to be tuned before you do any of this idle stuff, period. Uh, I, I don't recommend using the hitting the learn button because you're, you're going to end up making the map look something like this. You're tuning the pathway. You're not tuning here and all around it. So that's why I, when you see it needs 10% fuel here, probably needs it down here too. You know, that's a probably, but think about it that way and come down and, 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 and you know, work on that part to try to get it, get it balanced out. Uh, 
you're better off there in a lot of cases with a lot of a lot of cams, especially your rougher cams, to just to shut off to learn. Uh, watch. How do you prefer to watch it? Uh, watch your target AFR and your actual AFR, and get those two to as close as possible. Uh, it's basically done the same way uh, with your factory OE computers. Uh, once you have those two together, whatever it commands it can get. I'll go back to this now. Uh, okay, this, this is the same setting in the factory computer that's known as uh, Dashpot preposition. So, so it's held there once you're driving down the road or exceeding 3% on the TPS. It's holding this. And when you lift off whatever this time set to, and whatever this or this uh, number here is, it's going to begin its decay. If this number is too low, it's probably going to. If, if you were to set this wrong and set this number to say 800, it's not going to go into that ramp. It's going to wait until it reaches 800 before it actually fully starts to drop. Uh, so. Uh, that's called your dash pot in the factory computer that would be dash pot decay rate here it's called rpm above idle to start the ramp so what i like to do is start with that number kind of high you know start with it uh what the measurement says start with a thousand and rev the engine you can do it sitting still rev it up to say 3000 hold it for a minute lift off the pedal if it hangs up there it doesn't fall then start increasing this number by 25 or 50 rpms at a time and once you hit the right spot then it will fall without you doing anything and and now you're right so when you lift it's going to begin a gradual decay that's in most cases uh they don't always do what they're told to do Different cams act crazy. Some cams are like a like a dropping off a cliff. Some will drop like a rock. More stockish cams may tend to want to hang up, and they may need you may need to do more adjustment there to get it to fall. And others may work just perfect and just taper right on down and land real soft. And once it reaches this point, which is a number you have to play around with a little bit too, somewhere around 50, 100, 200. Uh, that's where it actually uh, kicks back into the, the idle settings take back over and it thinks it's actually basically setting still idling. Uh, that's where that'll kick back in. That's when the ramp is finished and it's actually gone back into idle. Uh, but as I had mentioned, all this stuff, do it last. Leave these numbers leave these numbers long and high uh, that'll help eliminate your stalling and and having to fight with it and then once you've got that fuel right you know it's going to act a hundred times better once you actually got the fuel right the whole table and then it will be easy to make those adjustments and, and get everything uh, you know down to a good level of drivability uh, anyone has any questions, please post it in the comments. Uh, get with me. I'll, I'll try to answer them. If you'd like to see some other videos on some of this other other setups here, uh, I'll be glad to go through them for you. Uh, thanks for watching.